Hello, I'm Dr. Roxanne Farman Farmayan, and I am Academic Director of International Relations and Global Studies at the Institute of Continuing Education at the University of Cambridge. One of the most striking outcomes of the COVID-19 lockdown has been the way the internet and social media technology has transformed our lives, turning our homes into classrooms and offices. We are Zooming and tweeting to stay up with the news, conduct meetings, and stay in touch with colleagues and family. For most of us, this has been transformative, disrupting old patterns of work at home and business, and developing news of coronavirus all around us, and everything seems to be merging together. The upside being new flexibility, the downside being concerns over privacy, mental health, and management of our time. But in politics and the tech industry itself, this disruption has been full-blown for some time, changing the way influencers sway public opinion, how campaigns are targeted to different groups of voters, and how foreign countries get involved in other nations' elections. U.S. President Donald Trump figured out the power of instant communication to millions of his supporters when he started daily tweets during his presidential campaign in 2016. Once president, he began tweeting policy decisions, something he could do as easily from his private salon over coffee as he could after a meeting with White House staff. With over 700 million new mobile subscribers across the world over the past three years, other national leaders now do the same, creating a personal link to their national publics, which means they are able to connect across their countries instantly and take center stage in their activities of politics, talking to their advisors, or changing their minds instantly and quickly, and generally disrupting politics as usual. At the same time, issues of hate speech and misinformation have taken center stage on the huge platforms such as Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, which have become the locations where many countries' politics are played out. Hashtags became the hallmark of the Arab uprisings that shook the Middle East in 2011. The Tunisian Revolution, which triggered that movement, relied heavily on Facebook pages to share information, documents, and videos put up by demonstrators, as it is still the case today in Hong Kong, Lebanon, and many other places where upheaval and parallel dialogues are being conducted against government actions. Yet the danger is that misinformation is equally being shared. U.S. regulators, for example, are already accusing Russia of actively posting controversial claims on U.S. social networks to influence the upcoming American presidential election. And just this May, a 26-minute video on false treatments for COVID-19 was widely shared before Facebook and YouTube were forced to take it down. The effect of social media and shared tech on international relations has been one of the greatest disruptions to how countries interact and make decisions, affecting how leaders approach not only their politics, but how countries do business with each other or conduct wars. Not least of the difficulties facing the international community is the sheer size of the social media platforms. Facebook, for example, has more subscribers than the populations of China, the U.S., Japan, and Britain combined, making them more powerful international actors despite being run by private individuals. Although many leaders feel it is critical to regulate them, no one has yet figured out how. This is what makes the study of international relations such a cutting edge and indeed, at times, hair-raising subject. The political and economic changes we analyze have histories that are important to understand and put into context. But history never repeats itself, and so we are always looking for how to comprehend multiple points of change simultaneously, the tensions between the world's great powers 
and the impact of very different styles of leadership. We consider patterns of human rights and trajectories of conflict, engaging different points of view so we can better understand the world around us. I invite you to join the debate about what disruption is and how it is changing our global politics. To hear a lecture on what we teach on our courses in international relations at the Institute of Continuing Education, take a look at our award-bearing courses, the Certificate and the Diploma in International Relations, 